So we've heard an awful lot about commercial real estate in recent months. Not all of it good. Give us yeah. your perspective from Cushman and Wayfield, because you have a particular way of looking at it. Yeah, I do. And I think that there's been a lot of dialogue around the idea that there's a bifurcation of assets out there, um, higher quality and lower quality. I like to think of it as a trifurcation of the assets. So we have some super high quality assets out there in the office, industrial, and retail sector in particular who are untouchable. Right, you saw them get through COVID, they demand higher rents, everything is great. Then on the other bookend of this, you have assets that were struggling before COVID even started. And those assets continue to struggle and may never make it back. The meat of the conversation is around the middle of those markets and the assets that reside in the middle of those markets and how they're performing. And I think that the struggle for all of us is that it's a gray zone out there. We want to say it's good, it's bad, it's bottomed, it's recovered. We want to make a big statement about it, but it's nuanced. We think about some of them having financing that's coming due next year at substantially higher rates. We think about some of them that are owned purely in cash. Some markets could be compelling like Baltimore that you and I don't sit around and think about or San Francisco in contrast to New York. So I think that what's going on out there is a discovery process whereby people are trying to figure out which assets they want to get involved in, what has value. And at the end of the day, I, I do believe in 2024, we'll have some distress playing through the system, but that will just be helpful to getting us to the point of resolution. So it's a, it's a large and complicated asset class, but we yeah. in the media like to make things really simple. <laughs> <laughs> and the question people are asking and addressing right now is, have we bottomed? And are yeah. we coming back up yet? We had John Gray from Blackstone just this week say he thinks we have bottomed. We had Mary Daly from San Francisco Fed saying she thinks there's money about to come in. What's your perspective? Yeah, I think that if you want to say bottomed or not bottomed, you lean to we've bottomed. Because if you're going to make a macro statement about it, I would say somewhere around 80% of the assets are in really good shape. And 20% still have some issues to work through. We know that the Fed is most likely going to come out with some kind of rate cut. Powell's comments last week were dovish, regardless of what's going on with inflation and kind of how sticky it's been. That gives everybody a point of view to think that there's recovery coming. When there's recovery coming and optimism in the real estate sector, people will start to make decisions. That's what takes you out of the bottom. When it comes to offices, talk about the geography. You mentioned some of the geographical areas, but we hear, for example, San Francisco is very different from Chicago, very different yeah. from New York. And don't get me started about things like Dallas or Austin or uh, uh, Florida, Miami. What are you seeing? Um, I mean, we're seeing certain markets that are doing really well. I think that that kind of top line headline is accurate, and you're seeing other markets that are really struggling. Um, I think that when you take a step out of the United States, it's really compelling. I was just in India in New Delhi, uh, those markets are doing really well in Asia. A lot of occupancy in the office market, a lot of occupancy here in, in New York City. We're doing pretty well here too. How has real estate overall changed in the last 10, 15 years? Yeah, I love this question. Um, we talk about the flow of dollars into the commercial real estate sector over the last 20 years. I've been in real estate a little over 30 years. And when I started, it was one of the only alternatives you were never considered in the vein of equities or you know, bonds and debt. I think today it's a core part of every money manager out there, which means there's just more capital behind it. And so in that way, it's changed. But let's talk about the human equation also post-COVID. The way that we talk about real estate, yes, the office conversation has dominated the work from home, the return to office. But when you think about the ecosystem of real estate and certainly what we manage, we're involved in hospitals, we're involved in R&D, we're involved in protecting national art collections. We clean universities, you know, I mentioned Harvard to you in our conversation this morning. Real estate is really about what is built and what is out there in the built environment. It's also about how it's used. Are yes. you seeing changes in the way real estate's being configured in the wake of the pandemic and all the difficulties we've had? Yeah, um, people are really reconsidering what has value. And it used to be that you could walk on to maybe any traditional office space and it would almost look like a trading floor, right? A pod, a pod, a pod, a pod. And people were lined up almost like soldiers in that space. Now what you're seeing is more common area. And what you're seeing in terms of services companies like ourselves are groups that specialize in workplace solutioning. How you enter your space, how do you feel when you come into the space? How are you the most productive when you come into it? These are the questions our clients are starting to ask us, not just, can you find me 100,000 square feet? So we have to have the specialists for that. The other way that it's changed is that 
data is really important in decision making today. So if you and I were to walk down the street and you said, well, I'd like to be in this building, people don't make decisions like that anymore. They want to know how does the employee get here? How long is the commute? Does that employee have the skills that I want? Where do they live? Right? How can I make them come to the office or incentivize to get them here? It's been a difficult period for mm. commercial real estate. I think everyone would agree to that. Yep. Cushman Wakefield's not immune to that. Yes. As you look forward now, coming out of this, what's your growth plan for Cushman mm. Wakefield? So we went through a full pack strategy plan a couple months ago. I came in in July, as you know, and seating growth was a really important component of that. We love our services businesses. We're going to seed it organically. We had been a company that really grew mostly through small tuck-in M&A after we went public. I really like the idea of feeding into our services businesses to grow them directly. We have very talented people in there. We're also going to blow up our capital markets group and, and really expand that area in terms of, of growth and talent there as well. I also like some of these megatrends that are playing through the system. We talk about population growth. We talk about data centers. We talk about geopolitical risk. We talk about climate. How do these play through? Well, we've done a whole pack of analysis for ourselves, proprietary, um, so that we understand where we want to see growth take us forward.